Hi. Now this is a, another tutorial in my series on power and it's a follow-up to an earlier one I did where we were looking at a vehicle moving along a horizontal road and up an inclined plane where it was going at a constant speed. But in this particular video what I want to do is show you how we handle questions where the vehicle is accelerating. And to do that I've got an example up here. We've got a car of mass 900 kilograms and it moves along a straight horizontal road and when the engine is working at a rate of 13 kilowatts the car is moving with a speed of 20 meters per second. And what we've got to do is calculate the acceleration of the car if the resistance to motion is 350 newtons. The second part talks about the vehicle going up an inclined plane here but we'll look at that in a moment. But for now let's just have a look at handling the first part. Now if you get a question like this the chances are you'll most probably have to draw a sketch and I would say you're obviously not going to necessarily want to draw a car just draw a circle or a rectangle to illustrate the particle. So we're treating the car as a particle here and its mass is 900 kilograms so we'd want to put the weight on so that's going to act downwards obviously mg newton so that's going to be 900 g newtons. There's going to be a contact force from the surface of the road so I'm going to call that r newtons for a reaction. But because we're going to be dealing with a contact force in this problem it's going to be different because of the incline so I'm going to change this to R1 newtons okay what else have we got well there's going to be a driving force okay so that's going to be to the right say so we'll call that D1 D1 newtons and we know that there's a resistance to motion of 350 newtons so that's going to act to the left mark that in then 350 newtons now the car is moving with a velocity of 20 meters per second to the right here okay so it's got a speed of 20 meters per second and we've got to find out the acceleration that it's going at at this particular instant so we'll call that a meters per second per second so to do a problem like this knowing that the car engine is working at a rate of 13 kilowatts we turn to the equation that the power developed then by the engine is equal to the driving force times the speed that it's going at. Power equals the force F times V. And we can fill this in with our values. But you've got to be careful because power when driving force is measured in newtons and the speed is measured in meters per second, power has to be measured in watts. So we've got 13 kilowatts, so that's going to be 13,000 watts okay 13,000 watts equals the driving force which is d1 multiplied by the speed which is going to be 20 and to get d1 obviously we just divide both sides by 20 and if you do that you find that d1 turns out to be 650 and the units will be newtons 650 newtons then now that we've got our driving force we can turn to finding the acceleration by resolving to the right looking at Newton's second law that is force equals mass times acceleration so resolving to the right our overall force to the right is going to be d1 minus 350 d1 being 650 so we'll just put that there 650 minus the 350 and that's going to equal mass times acceleration the mass is 900 
kilograms, we're out to find the acceleration, so it's just going to be 900A. And obviously to get that acceleration A, we just need to do 650 take 350, which is 300, and divide both sides by 900. So we get 300 over 900, which comes out as exactly one-third. One-third meter per second per second. So that's our acceleration. Okay, well that's the first part done. Now we'll move on to the second part here. As the car goes up this hill here, inclined at 6 degrees to the horizontal. We're told that if the power is now increased to 20 kilowatts, we've got to find the speed when the acceleration is 0.2 meters per second per second. Assuming that the resistance to motion remains the same as before, 350 newtons. So let's mark some forces first of all on the vehicle. We've got again the weight obviously acting downwards, mg, 900g then, newtons. What else have we got? We've got the contact force. We'll mark that in as R2 this time then, R2 newtons. We've got a new driving force acting up the hill, D2, D2 newtons, but the same resistance to motion. That's going to be 350 newtons then. We're also told that this vehicle is accelerating, so We'll just mark in an acceleration arrow. It's accelerating at a rate of 0.2 meters per second per second. And we've got to find out what its speed is at this moment in time. V meters per second, we'll say. And because it's on an incline, I'd always encourage dropping a dotted line there and just marking in that angle. It'd be the same angle as the plane here, 6 degrees. So, how are we going to get V? Well, what we need to do is, first of all, resolve up the plane so that we can get access to D2. And once we've got access to D2, we can turn to our power equation, and that will give us V. You might even like to pause the video and have a go at this. Okay, well, let's see how we do it then. We resolve first of all up the plane. So if we resolve up the plane, that way being positive, we've got D2 then minus the component of the weight down the plane which is going to be minus 900 G sine 6 degrees. We've also got the resistance here acting down the plane so that's going to be minus 350 and all of this resultant force is going to equal mass times acceleration. Mass being 900, we know that the acceleration is 0.2, so multiply that by 0.2. If we work out these two terms and add them to both sides, we'll get D2. I'll leave you to do that. D2, though, turns out to be... 1,451.941 and so on and that will be measured in Newtons. Okay, so assuming you've got that we now turn to our power equation. In other words, since power is equal to that driving force D2 times the speed that it's going at that moment in time, it follows that the power, remember, has to be converted to watts. That's going to be 20,000 watts is equal to D2. So we've got 1,451.941 and so on. That's got to be multiplied by the velocity V. Okay, so to get V, all we need to do is divide by the 1,451. If we do that you'll find that V turns out to be 13.774 and so on. And if we give that to say three signal figures, that's going to be 13.8. 13.8 meters per second, 
two, three significant figures. Okay, well, hope that's given you some idea as usual, and uh, that just shows you how to handle problems where you've got acceleration involved. And that brings us now to the end of this particular tutorial.